Class is in session. Shrubadier into Dendrologist is kind of a cute curve. In my experience so far, though, this Warrior deck is really good against my deck. Because they just throughout the game randomly get enough power on their hero to kill Tree Ants. And it's really annoying. So it's just hard to keep a board against this Warrior deck if he has the Galakrond thing. Alright, so even if he kills this tree, I can just make another one and then play Dendrologist. And looks like that is necessary. Lots of garbage here. I guess Claw is probably the best card. It's pretty yikes, but I think it's the best card. Do I want a Whispering Woods for four? Not particularly. If I can trade off the Acorn Bearer, then I at least get five out of my Whispering Woods next turn. He's really invoked twice already. God, it's so impossible to have a board against that deck. Whoops, I meant to play Acorn Bearer, not the 1-1, one -one, but whatever. Probably doesn't matter that much. I was pretty sure I grabbed the Acorn Bearer since, you know, the squirrels were not even in my hand when I did that, but whatever. No Treant for this. Uh, do I want to just play Mulch Muncher here? Probably not. Looks like Hero Power to play my other stuff is good. And we'll at least try to be a little bit greedy with this Tenderologist. Although, not sure how often I get a card out of it. Oh god, Vargoth. He probably can't use that very well, can he? God, just every card in that deck kills my stuff. It's so annoying. Alright, let's go Soul of the Forest. That's good. I have to leave up Vargoth, but I don't think Vargoth is that good. Alright, so I should hopefully have a tree in place. I can Dendrologist next turn, and I can probably play a pretty cheap Mulch Muncher alongside it. I guess the nightmare here is that he has second Awaken. No, I think Kronks was the nightmare. It's pretty hard to beat the buffed stuff unless I just have a Savage Roar lethal. But, I mean, I'm not really under any threat of dying to a buffed Leroy or anything. And he still has to take the turn to actually play the Galakrond. Gloop's glorious gloop. I'd probably rather just have the activator for... Garden Gnome here. Uh, this gets traded off, I guess. Maybe I want to get Mulch Muncher in play this turn. That way, if he plays... Um, if he plays Galakron next turn, he just dies. He goes up to 22. Hmm. This goes here. Probably want to send 4 into this. Push 3, he's at 19. He wouldn't actually be dead on board, I don't think, but he'd be under a ton of pressure. Time run low. God, 
cost. So it goes up to 19. This is 11, 2, 4. I'd be one off from killing him if he Galakrond it here. He's probably not comfortable dying to one. But from his perspective, maybe there's not that much difference between one and, you know, ten or whatever because of Savage Roar. I do think it's unlikely he can have, like, a relevant minion here. Okay, just wants to gain two armor there. Oh, the Sathravar would have been so good here. Well, probably still just going to play Sathravar here. I have seen double Inner Rage, so I probably can't get Leroy Mercenaried. And maybe this Dendrologist can pick up Lethal if I have any trees that survive. Which it seems pretty likely I'll have at least one tree survive. Your flaws are your strength. I think that deck plays Whirlwind. Which he can coin out here. Oh, the old top deck, the card I need to live. Yeah, so he gains like 9 armor here. But, I mean, 9 armor doesn't... Well, 9 armor just from that. He also gains some from attacks as well. But if I can draw Savage Roar, this probably still just doesn't matter. Savage Roar. Nice. I was closer than I would have hoped. But it did seem like he drew some pretty good stuff. Which one of these one drops is better? I wonder if I ever just keep both. Probably do. I can go like turn one acorn bearer, turn two tree enforcements plus squirrel. I don't know, that doesn't sound that good when I say it out loud. Let's toss the Acorn Bearer to find a 5 cost spell. Alright, there's the activator for Garden Gnome. Do need to find a 2 and a 3, but I play several 2 drops. Shrubbadeer. Um, I think this is going face. If I go face, he can value trade the Shrubbadeer, and then I want to hero power the Pharaoh Cat, but I kind of want to hero power next turn anyway, since I don't really have a 3 drop in sight, and landscaping is the only thing I could draw. I'm beating him up with these trees. Alright, those are some cute one ones you've got over there, buddy. So I can potentially tree speaker next turn. But it doesn't really look like value trading helps me do that, so I'm just gonna hit him for four. On board he can only kill two of my tree ends, which is probably just a good enough tree speaker for me. Could also just trade off my board and play Force of Nature. But Tree Speaker is looking real good. Of course. I don't know, like if I play Force of Nature, I'm really hoping to get like one more tree to evolve. Let's just do this. I think these things should have Rush. That'd be cool, right? Takes a nice little bump there. Oh, and shadow stuff. Okay. But if he replays it, my 5-5 five five eats it pretty cleanly. 
And then I can uh, just drop a force of nature, I guess. Maybe he'll get a relevant lackey. Nope. So he's got, what, just two discovered dragons in his hand? Not really scared of either of those. I guess I want to hero power here. Because forcing him to use a weapon to go into my five power minion seems good. And I could play the Whispering Woods instead of the Force of Nature pretty conveniently without too much trouble, so whatever. Okay, well, I said I wasn't afraid of the dragons he discovered, but that one was stupidly good. But I think he's going to have a hard time keeping up with the wave of trees. I've got four more boards in my hand, basically, and if any of them stick, he dies. There's actually just a good chance he can't even deal with this board. Okay, Flick Sky Shiv, good card. Hopefully he doesn't have, like, Youthful Brewmaster. Youthful Brewmaster would be pretty nutty. Flick Sky Shiv is an insane card against tree and ducks, but not so much when you just have infinite trees. What if Flick also killed Forest's aid and Soul of the Forest and all the cards that make tree ants? That'd be pretty insane, huh? There is some chance he can pop off with that exotic mount seller, but none of the three drops are really relevant unless he just gets a ton of silverback patriarchs. I think that's the only relevant beast. Oh, that one's good. Okay, maybe I'm actually in trouble here. That's a big mount seller. But I think for now I'm just making more trees. Is there anything I can get off Dendrologist that just kills him? Starfire, I guess, right? Holy shit, this guy has gotten some good random cards this game. What the hell? I underestimated him. Um, I want to go Soul of the Forest here instead of Forest Aid, I think. Power of the Wild. It does let me break through, but it's probably not worth playing this turn, but in the future it'll be good. Um, do I make any attacks here? I get to replace my current trees with different, less ugly trees. But with this Power of the Wild in my hand, probably just want to make it as likely as possible that I have stuff in play next turn. Although, assuming his guy still has 8 health, Power of the Wild gives me 21 power, which does not give me a lethal setup. So maybe I do like making one or two attacks. This thing's down to 4, that goes into a 2. I don't know, math is hard, that's probably fine. Dragon's Horde. Wow, he got another rush minion, holy shit. I mean, if he was just getting, like, freaking Emperor Cobras or whatever off that, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. But the 4-1 rushers are pretty insane. That card's actually a really nice buff to Exotic Mount Seller. And Zilliax. But it still looks like I should have a pretty good Power of the Wild here. Wonder if he's... 
He is continuing to trade. I don't think I'm too worried about burst from that deck. So... I don't think I really need to kill Alexstrasza. But he's at 21 here. Assuming I have to trade into Zilliox, which I do. Could power the wild. I mean, I can't really kill Alexstrasza here even if I wanted to. Let's trade this off for a Treant and then draw two cards for zero. Drew into another Aeroponics. And that's a Savage Roar. So with Savage Roar, my face kills this. He's at 21. This is 12, 15. I could potentially hit Lethal with Dendrologist here, but it's pretty unlikely. But, uh, I guess it's not that bad to just play it and see what happens. These are all pretty bad. Are they, though? I should have probably played tree enforcements on my mulch muncher. Yeah, giving it plus two health was really good here. But I still have an insane board, and I have Savage Roar now. This Dragon Queen Alexstrasza needs to be pretty insane. But uh, there are definitely some insane things he can hit. I think that's fine. Oh god. Okay. So he kills my Mulch Muncher because I'm an idiot, but then he's still dead here, right? This is just... Five times five. Drew lots of my cool big stuff, but didn't get to play it. Probably don't want to keep these 8 mana cards, but the Acorn Bearer and the Landscaping both look pretty good. Aeroponics, so that's turn 4, Landscaping, draw 2 cards if I want. Acorn Bearer doesn't line up super well against that thing. But that's okay. I could try to coin out landscaping here, so I can play Dendrologist. But, uh... Looks like I'm probably just going hero power. And maybe next turn I even coin out Whispering Woods and then follow up with landscaping aeroponics. Seems like a pretty solid curve. Dragon's Horde tells me that he's likely to be a Highlander build. So he's got the Death Rattle stuff, he's got the Burgle stuff, Galakrond, Highlander cards. Lots of stuff. Wonder if Fan of Knives made its way into that deck? Probably not, if I had to guess. That deck playing is several. Di that deck is playing several different packages. Looks like he's not a fan of knives. Let's trade off one of these so we can get our second treant. But I don't think there's much reason for me to take the next trade. I do leave myself open to a Faceless Corruptor here. But I don't think I'm that worried about Faceless Corruptor. It was pretty easy to play around though, so maybe I should have. But there is only one in his deck, if any. A 1-6 is surprisingly strong here. What if I just Savage Roar my way through? can use my face and a tree. 
And then I've got, what is this, 13 damage? Probably not quite worth it. Let's see what Dendrologist can do for me. Gift of the Wild. That's probably going to be a no. But these other cards are pretty bad as well. Witching Hour gets squirrels and nothing else. Hidden Oasis. Eh, we'll take Gift of the Wild, I guess. Maybe with Gift of the Wild I do just Savage Roar here. Since I've got another burst option. What if I'm not roaring? I go 2-2, two, two, have to trade off two one ones. Then I can play another Dendrologist and two more Squirrels. Yeah, let's just go Dendro- or no, one more Squirrel. Or a tree ant instead. Let's just go Dendrologist, I think it's fine. Pretty easy Soul of the Forest, I think. Alright, so if like any of this stuff lives, my next turn can be double squirrel plus soul of the forest. That's just very powerful. Not sure what the best thing he could hit off the burglar is. Looks like uh, arcane explosion would be strong, but it's not strong enough. Wrath, sure, not strong enough. I might have lethal here, but probably not. He's at 18, I've got... 18, actually. Wow, Savage Roar is a hell of a card. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 18. I wonder if it would be reasonable to nerf Savage Roar. Is it like a shitty card at 4 mana? Hard to say. After playing with this list for a bit, I can pretty safely say that all the new cards it got are very strong. Shrubbadeer and Tree Enforcements are just solid early game cards, and they're pretty much the reason that you're able to play Dendrologist since it can actually be activated early. Gory the Might Tree is pretty expensive and kinda clunky, but he has great stats and his effect is very impactful on the game, so he's a good card as well. And then there's Aeroponics, which is absolutely insane. After playing with this card for a bit, I'm pretty convinced that it's like one of the strongest cards ever printed. But obviously it only works in Treant decks and not other decks. Like imagine how insane this card would be if it said like Mech or Beast or something instead of Treant. But even as a Treant specific card, the card is just absolutely nuts. But the problem is, like I said, you have to be playing Treants. And Treants, I think they are pretty good, and I think you probably could take a Treant deck to Legend without too much trouble. But I'm not sure that it really compares that favorably to the Tier 1 decks in the meta right now. At least at my rank, the decks I was playing against the most were Highlander Mage and Galakrond Warrior, both of which seem like pretty bad matchups for this deck, because they can just clear your board so consistently. But if you're at a rank that has more, like, rogue or maybe more hunters or something, I could definitely see the Treants performing a little better for you than they did for me. I did end up making one change to my list. I cut the Tree Speakers in favor of two copies of Power of the Wild. I do still kind of like Tree Speaker. It has some really nice blowout potential, but it also has the potential to just flop and be a dead card in your hand. I think the Power of the Wild is a little more consistent, but I do still like the Tree Speaker. Um, one card that I'm still playing that could definitely be cut is Sathravar. I just really like playing Sathravar with Mulch Muncher. It's just such a cool little combo. But Sathravar is probably not the strongest card that could be in the slot. I personally would probably cut it for a Tree Speaker if I was really trying. Compared to some of the more popular Tree and Druid lists, I'm not playing Anubisath Defender which really just doesn't seem like a good card in this deck to me, but the most popular list I found was playing Anubisath Defender. The problem with it is, like, Aeroponics never actually costs 5 mana. I'm assuming if it's discounted it doesn't let you play Anubisath Defender. Um, Forest's Aid, when you're putting 5 things in play, it's not even really that good to also put an Anubisath in play, because they're still just going to AoE it. And then your final big spell is Force of Nature, 
Which Anubisath Defender is actually pretty insane with Force of Nature, but I personally didn't feel like that was enough. Maybe I'm underestimating the potential of this play specifically, or maybe I'm underestimating how often it gets activated by a Dendrologist. But it just didn't seem that good to me, and when I looked at the stats it didn't really seem like it had great stats either. So I'm playing... I'm actually playing Whispering Woods, I guess, over Anubisath Defender. I don't know why a lot of these decks don't play Whispering Woods. It seems really hard to justify playing Soul of the Forest if you're not playing Whispering Woods. And in fact, the list that I looked at that was playing Soul of the Forest and not Whispering Woods, Soul of the Forest was the worst card in the deck. So that's even more reason that I feel like I should be playing Whispering Woods, but apparently that's not popular. Outside of a few small details though, my list is pretty close to the one that's more common. And I think either list is probably good enough to climb the ranks a little bit. 